Hello my lovelies and welcome to another video here from uh, me, Rob, here at Kickback Garage. Now today, just a quick video, uh, I've had a major tidy up in the garage. I want to show you what my uh, Series 2 looks like completed and I've got a bit of a dilemma with uh, with this head on, uh, on my mate's engine here. So I've got that in there and I'm going to show you how I think I might be able to fix it with uh, the help of this little tool. So uh, do yourself a favour. Grab the old coffee. I'll send the scooter over. And by the way, this is this is for Odin. Hey Odin, that way. What? But I'll do it this way anyway. What? Something like that. Well, a mate of mine delivered the uh, engine down here just so I can uh, pressure test it, and uh, I found the problem instantly. Uh, What's happened is uh, this is an uh, Indian aluminium head and I think somebody in the past or, <laughs> or the guy that owns it maybe has uh, tightened the uh, uh, spot plug a little bit too tight and it's made a right mess of the ceiling area on the, uh, where the spot plug sits in the head. So instead of buying a new uh, headset top because uh, this friend of mine is a massive cheapskate I bought that found this fancy tool. I did a lot of searches on uh, on the internet and I found this from a manufacturer in the United States of America and uh, this could come in handy in the future as well so I, I fancy buying that you know I like my tools and what it is basically is um, the threads on this uh, cylinder head are actually quite good there's no problem with those but it looks like it's taken off like the first two or three threads on it so that the uh, plug hasn't got enough area to uh, seal on the head there. Uh, what I'm hoping this tool will do is, the idea behind this is that when I thread this in, not only does it clean up the, uh, the first, the, the uh, thread, sorry, on the head, it also has this like beastie, like mini mill on the top there. So the idea of this is you screw this into the cylinder head and it's uh, spring loaded. So what happens is it puts pressure on this piece here, which is, as you can see there, maybe, do you get in focus there? It's serrated on the edge there. And this should give it, um, it should like chamfer off or, or flatten off the, uh, the area where the spot plug sits so that you can get your spot plug airtight again. So uh, let's give this a go. Right, so that's the head off. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to lightly spray the threads here and the area around the threads on uh, where the cylinder head, uh, where the plug sits. And I'm going to have to carefully wind this in. Yep. Now the threads aren't knackered on this. So that's not a problem. And the trick with this tool is apparently, does that fit there? Yes, it does. Is you wind this down until the spring stops. And it's, it's uh, adding pressure to the seat. It says in the instructions, just wind it down until it stops. But because my seat is absolutely terrible on this cylinder, what I'm going to do is wind it a bit back and forward here. See if I can uh, grind that area. Just so that I might be able to save the ceiling area for the spark plug. So let's have a look what that's done. Right, okay, so there's a bit of shaving here. I need to clean up this a little bit and uh, get my compressor started up. Let's have a look what it's done. Now, 
filming small stuff on uh, my action cam here is quite hard. So I'll see if I can get something I can point with. What about a screwdriver? So let's have a see if you can see that. I'll zoom right in, right in. And by <laughs> what I mean by zooming is I'll actually bring bring the item closer to the camera. Um, so what that tool did, yes, it, it has cleared up the area, the face in which the uh, spark plug is uh, tightened down on. But I'm not sure if you can see it, but if I'll point it out, what it looks like to me is, you can see it's quite rough, still quite rough on this edge here. And it's actually missing, I'd say, I reckon one, well, at one point when he's pulled out his spark plug, He's actually pulled with him because there's quite a recess down there. There is absolutely no threads at the top here, and that is a good, a good five millimeters. So what I reckon has happened here, it's been tightened down so hard, and because this is, a, is an Indian one, the uh, the quality not being very good, probably sand cast, it might have might have a cast defect under the top part of the threads here and he's actually pulled out the threads at the top here now what I could do is uh, because the seat isn't too bad now I've got a feeling that I'm gonna have a problem here at the top but uh, what you could do in this case is fit a time cert now the problem with time certs is they're very expensive really expensive and I don't really fancy uh, buying a, kit, a time cert kit for a uh, hundred pounds to repair a uh, 35 pound head. Now I bought that tool there in the hope that that would work but I, I reckon if we fit a time cert I think we're still gonna have problems because if I sort of line that up there I'm not sure if you can see it this area is really really knackered. Now I've got about a millimeter of space from this indentation here or a split uh, to where the ring is on the the spark plug there but it, it has tidied up this area quite well which is good but I'm still doubting that this tool will work what I'll do I'll uh, fit it on the uh, engine again put it back on the cylinder this one by the way doesn't use because of the um, the squish on this we didn't have to actually use a uh, head gasket so I can uh, test this quite fast because I don't have to wait for this to uh, this sealant to uh, set properly because this is if I don't use head gaskets then I really really like the weld weld tight uh, sealant which uh, stays sort of sticky and this has been on that scooter for about a week so uh, all good and done right uh, stop bubbling let's fit this and let's see if we can get it airtight Right, so that's the uh, head fitted and uh, fit a new spark plug here in the hope <laughs> that this might seal. Now, uh, what I'm going to have to do now is uh, pump up the old uh, pressure test. Let's have a look. Pressure test uh, thingamajig here. And see if I can get some pressure in this uh, engine. Everything else is sealed. They've just got the problem with the uh, spark plug head here and I can see straight away it's uh, leaking like a sieve so I'm going to use this which is a gas what is it gas uh, spray for uh, like tea uh, <laughs> start again Rob right so that's the uh, pressure test uh, underway yeah and I'm going to use this spray of mine which is a leak down uh, spray I'm gonna see if ah oh. oh no it's a... <laughs> that is so annoying not a chance in in hell there you can see it's leaking really really badly here so that was eighty quid down the drain I suppose. Never mind, I'll have to tell the owner that he'll uh, need a new uh, 
Need a new head? Not expensive. I've seen them uh, on the web sites for around about anything between 35 to 40 pounds. So I'll have to give him the bad news on that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that didn't work whatsoever. So uh, I've uh, talked to my mate, and he's uh, already got a seal in the head on uh, on the way, which is good. So I should have that sorted out without within the next week or so. The winter's very cold here in Norway at the moment. You can hear my little oven is struggling to try and keep a normal temperature here. But uh, what I've done this week is I've had a massive major uh, tidy up in the garage. I've been to the skip uh, with three loads and I've finished my LI uh, 150 series two, which I'm gonna give you a quick look around first. But as you see here, this is the area where my engine uh, table used to be and I've moved that over I have sold my little Myford uh, lathe because I've got something coming in the next video if you fancy having a look at this uh, I bought myself a new lathe which I'm really excited about it's got loads of functions and features uh, but it's old it's vintage so if you fancy having a watch of uh, how we get in the garage, it weighs 450 kilos. <laughs> I have no idea how that's going to turn out. But anyway, so I made room for the new lathe there. And uh, I want to take you round, have a little bit of a look, see if I can move my light and my camera at the same time. Let's have a look. And I have to look here because I've turned the screen on at the front and I can't see that at the back. So, but as you see here, this is my engine uh, uh, workstation over the tools, which is, <laughs> is a lot more sensible than having that over the lathe that I had before. That's the old table for the lathe. I've even done something fantastic. I've put my, I've fixed my vice to the table here, <laughs> which is something I haven't done for about four years because I had so much clutter. I've still got half a BSA under that table there, but uh, yep, yeah, I'll see if I can sell off those parts and buy some fancy Lambretta bits, we never know. Uh, what else? Yep, yeah, let's have a look around here. And as you see here, I have got, uh, I've got the uh, lift all tidied up, ready for the scooter. This one is going up to Sandra's house. And we're gonna very, very shortly start filming the uh, Vespa Mania series, which is really cool. I've completely finished that, uh, the series one, it's finished rebuilt, it's not uh, leaking anymore, runs really well. Although I haven't had a proper blast on that thing yet because uh, the weather is terrible. It's actually, uh, is it two degrees and sleet outside at the moment, which is horrible. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, well, uh, one last thing before I am go. Uh, I want to show you around my uh, series too. Tell me what you think. So I've put the camera right back over there so that you can get a proper side shot of it. Now, uh, the uh, rear footboards here that I've got hold of, the NOS rear footboards, uh, this one, incidentally, the right-hand side is not NOS, it's uh, the reproduction from uh, Scooter Sense. They're very good, very good. I had to uh, fettle one of the holes, that's it. Looks really nice. He's matched up the paint. This paint work is 15 years old. This is brand new. You can't really see much of a difference, apart from the fact that that's a little bit more shiny. Then we've got this beautiful, what I think at least, beautiful Volkswagen pastel green from, I, I believe this, color, this is a color from uh, 1947. So he's definitely old enough. I've got my BGM, beautiful BGM uh, Pegasus seat on there. Uh, I've uh, got the same green color on the front and the reason why I'm doing this side profile shot here is because I have quite a few people asking what does the pipe look like on the scooter with the bodywork on so hopefully you can see that you just see the little end can at the back there so it's a real proper sleeper this is I uh, also I'm waiting for a, a trinket that's going to fit on the inside of the uh, leg shield here from JB Fabrication stay tuned for that one and I'm seriously considering fitting a uh, vertical spare wheel holder. I'm not quite sure about that. I like the clean looks as it is now, but when I'm going to do the rallies, it's uh, always handy having a spare wheel, even though I ride tubeless. It's sometimes easier to just uh, pull off the spare wheel and stick that on if you, uh, if you get problems with your, uh, with your tires. So uh, yeah, very nice. Do you want to have a look at the front as well? All right, okay.
So this is what she looks like from the front angle here. Uh, I'm very, very pleased, I have to say. I, uh, I'm chuffed to bits with that. Definitely, she's definitely not sure quality, but uh, looks pretty enough uh, blasting around the roads. And I think <laughs> some motorbikers are going to be quite surprised when they come flying past on this uh, old school looking machine here. Right, well, I'll knock this video on the head. Uh, not uh, quite a short one for me. And uh, <laughs> this is my daughter's dog, by the way. It's not mine. But uh, he likes to spend a lot of time in the garage, don't you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Rasmus. And uh, if I don't see you before uh, Christmas or New Year's, then uh, have a good one, please. And stay safe, as they say, in these uh, harrowing times. We really, really hope we... We're all optimistic now, aren't we, uh, as to how uh, next season is going. Hopefully, loads of riding and loads of meetings and rallies and stuff like that that we normally used to do. And uh, next video, as I said, it'll be an uh, installment of my new lathe, which is quite a special one. So uh, if you like tooling and stuff like that, be, uh, be sure to stick around and uh, have a look at that one. And uh, I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra!